Hello and welcome to a little mini devlog. Today I want to go over the grandfather clock that sits in the mansion's library. It has been a little while since the last devlog. Rest assured, I have been working on the game at least a little bit every day. A lot of lighting work, making sure the textures fit properly, the workings of all the puzzles. I have gotten a lot accomplished, but it's a lot of little things. I will get another update video out, but in the meantime, let's take a look at this clock. I wanted to share this with you because it was sort of the first little piece of the game that I figured out by myself. As with most things I've done while I've been learning, it may not be the quote-unquote correct way to do it or the most efficient, but it works like I want it to. I started with a model. Turbo Squid and Sketchfab are great websites to find 3D models for your projects. A lot of them are even free. This grandfather clock model is free even for commercial use as long as you attribute the author. I've included the link down in the description in case you want to follow along. My plan was to make a working clock. When I opened this model in Blender, I found that even though some of the parts had been separated, many of the parts were single pieces. The first thing I needed to do was go in and separate the pendulum from the main body and the hands from the clock face. The pendulum was modeled going straight up the middle chime, so I had to grab all the faces, separate them, and pull them back so that the pendulum would swing back and forth behind the chimes. This left a missing piece, but I could easily just duplicate one of the other chime rods and move it over. My blender work is done and looks something like this. I now add separate meshes for the body, the glass, the clock face, and all the hands. I then export the FBX file so that I can import it into Unreal. When I import the model into Unreal, I have to make sure that this box remains unchecked. Combine meshes. If this box is checked, then everything that I just did in Blender would be for nothing. This model already came with texture files, so I just had to create materials from them. I also made a separate material for the hands so that I could make the backgrounds transparent. Otherwise, they would show up as rectangles on the clock. With all the pieces set, it's time to make a blueprint. I can drag all those pieces in, and because they were made in the same file, they'll keep all of their locations that they originally had together. My original plan of setting the relative rotation of the hands didn't work, so I decided to tackle this the way an actual clock would function. Clock hands are situated on a cylinder, which spins around the middle of the clock. So I created a cylinder for each hand, since they would have to spin at different intervals. Then I had to do some math. A full rotation of the cylinder would be 360 degrees. My timer is going to tick every second. So for the second hand, I had to figure out how far the cylinder would rotate in a second. Then I had to figure out how far a minute hand would rotate in a second, and how far an hour hand would rotate in a second. The second hand ends up rotating 6 degrees every second. The minute hand, 0.1 degree a second. And the hour hand, 0 0.0833 degrees a second. So while the clock will not keep current time relative to the player, it will keep accurate time. The game will start at 9 p.m. And if you run around the mansion for an hour, you will hear the clock strike 10. I ended up using the Add Local Rotation node for each hand. The custom event of time would go through, rotate each hand its given rotation, wait a second, and then loop back and start again. For the pendulum, I created a timeline of two seconds, which goes back and forth five degrees. This time I just use a sphere, working the same way the cylinders worked for the hands. By setting the relative rotation of the sphere using that timeline, the pendulum will continually swing back and forth, completing one full swing every two seconds. I grabbed some clock sounds off of freesound.org and trimmed it down to two ticks. This is not a perfect solution as the sound exists outside of the timeline so it could end up out of sync depending on how fast the game's running. But I figure if my pendulum's off by a half a second, and that's the worst part about my game, 
I'm doing pretty good. So that's my working clock. I know I kind of glanced over some parts, so if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Have you subscribed yet? Time's a ticking. My goal is to reach a thousand by the end of this year, and it's hard to believe I'm already about a third of the way there. As always, I appreciate you taking this journey with me. And until next time, always remember to carry a light into the darkness.